Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft, and this is the third video in my three-part series of things that you need to start camping. Now, the first video was 10 things that are essential. Those are the things that you're going to need to start camping. If you've never been camping before and you have those 10 things, you can get started. The second list were comfort items. They were 10 items that were gonna make your trip a lot more comfortable and a lot more enjoyable. This video is if you have decided that you want to pursue camping and this is something that you want to invest in long term. These are 10 things that I can't recommend. These are things that you're going to have to research. These are things that everybody has their own personal preference on. And these are things that you're going to have to study before you make a purchase. So this is gonna be one of those videos where I don't add any uh, any links to the products in the description box down below because I want you to research before you buy. I don't want you to buy it just because it's in a description box. I want you to research it and buy what you feel you will need, what will cater to what exactly you are trying to accomplish, okay? So don't just see what I have and then copy it because these are things that I have learned over time and these are things that you're gonna to have to learn over time as well by doing your research. So first one is tarps. Now the different ways of using, there's a lot of different ways of using tarps. You're gonna to have to research how to use tarps. You're gonna to have to research different makes and models. You're gonna to have to research different sizes and shapes, uh, whether you want a square or a rectangle or a cat eye, whether you want to use it as a footprint meaning you want to put it underneath your tent. Uh, the advantages of that is you can buy footprints. This is for a Dominion tent. Uh, some people use paint sheets. These are cla uh, plastic for painting. Uh, some people prefer to have that coverage underneath their tent because it does two things. I prefer it because it helps protect my tent uh, from sticks and twigs and pine needles and acorns and things I may have missed clearing out my Space where I'm gonna put my tent if I miss something it's gonna go through a $20 Footprint instead of my $200 tent and so it's a lot cheaper replacing this than my tent also it creates a water barrier and so if the moisture from the earth seeps through your footprint that then has to seep through your tent okay if you have your tent directly on the ground it'll seep through your tent and everything's going to get wet this just adds an extra layer of protection between the ground and your tent and helps kind of protect your investment uh, the other tarps there's a lot of different tarps uh, you're going to have to study different configurations different styles of tents uh, what are not tents but tarps you're going to have to figure out exactly what it is you want to accomplish. Do you want a nice big area over you so that you can work even when it's raining? Do you want a shaded area? Do you want to pitch it a certain way? There's a lot of research you have to put into finding a tarp that's going to perform what you need it to perform. Are you going to use it for hammock camping? Do you want something small and lightweight? This is my hammock camping tarp. Uh, these are all things that you're going to have to research and figure out before you purchase a tarp. I like those blue and brown ones that you find at Walmart. I use those as footprints sometimes, but I don't like to pitch them because they're so loud and noisy. I prefer something much quieter if I'm going to be putting it in the air. But these are all things you're going to have to learn over time. The second one is a saw. Mora, no bark. The second one is a saw. Sorry, that's my dog. Uh, I like folding saws. Again, you can get uh, frame saws, carpenter saw. There's a lot of saws, okay? I like folding saws. This is a Baco Laplander. I like this one for camping. 
This is a silky saw. This is a big boy, so it's huge. This is good for yard work. That's what I use it for. And uh, again, you're gonna have to research the different saws. You're gonna have to research what exactly you're trying to accomplish. A bow saw has a limit. There's going to be a, a circumference that you cannot saw all the way through because you're gonna hit the top of that bow. Where with this, there is no limit. As long, the limit is in the length, okay? And so it could be super tall and it won't matter because I don't have a metal or a wood bar on top, okay? These are all things you're gonna have to research. These are all things that you're going to have to study and figure out exactly what you want to accomplish and then find the tool that will accomplish that task, okay? Some people like to use saws for fine carving. If they're making notches or tent pegs or something, making a tent peg notch with this heavy tooth saw isn't as easy as it is with my Leatherman saw. And so if you're just going to be making notches and whittling, sometimes the saw on a multi-tool is all you really need. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, next is a knife. Now, there's a lot of different, depending on what kind of camping style you are pursuing, the knife you choose is going to change drastically. Uh, here I have three different knives. They're all Mora knives. The, uh, I named my dog Mora. I like Mora knives a lot. The Mora Companion is a very affordable blade. The Mora Bushcraft Black is about a $50 blade. So it's a little bit more, well, it's kind of a lot more expensive. The Mora Companion is about $15 to $20. The Mora Bushcraft Black is $50. The Mora Garberg is $100. Uh, the LT Wright Genesis is like $200. You can get small knives, you can get big knives. Again, you're gonna have to research what you want to accomplish and then see what knife system caters to what you need, all right? I can't recommend any of these knives because I don't know what you're gonna be doing with any of them. And so if you're going to be in deep, thick brush and need a machete, you're going to have to study different machetes. If you are fine carving, you're going to have to study fine carving knives. Uh, I can't recommend one knife that's gonna do everything because it really doesn't exist. There's uh, jack of all trades, master of none, and then there's fine tune masters of different things. And so if you want something to be masterful in the thing that you perform the most, you're going to have to study, you're gonna to have to research, and you're gonna to have to find the tool that does that job. Uh, next is tubs. Now, a lot of people I have big tubs, little tubs. You guys have seen this tub a lot if you're subscribed to the channel. I used to use this as a table when I was first getting started. But I like tubs. What it allows me to do is it allows me to store my gear and so it's safely packed away when I'm not using it. Also, it helps me stay organized. When you are at a campground, one of those big extravagant ones with the showers and the playgrounds and all the amenities. It's nice because you're camping, but you have a lot of comforts from home there, like showers and uh, other things. Some have electricity and running water. The more you go camping, the more comfortable you get sleeping in a tent, the more comfortable you get being at camp, starting fire, doing camp activities you're more you're probably going to want to gravitate away from those areas you're want to gonna you're gonna want to go deeper into the woods you're gonna want to go and see those waterfalls you want to go and see the nature trails you're gonna want to see wildlife and the pictures on the wall that everybody thinks are so beautiful of the outdoors you're gonna want to go find them in real life and they are a hundred times better in real life than they are hanging on your wall i promise you that and it's just remarkable. And so as you do that, organization is gonna become key, all right? Because 
you are going to have to make sure that the further you are from home, the farther you're traveling to get to these remote locations, you cannot forget essential things. And having it in tubs prevents you from forgetting it at home, it prevents you from forgetting it at camp and having to repurchase it. Uh, these little tubs are nice because you can put all your kitchen stuff in here and every single meal you can grab this tub full of everything you need and it's safe and put away. I like the ones where the lids latch on because it helps keep the critters and the bugs and everything out. Because what happens is, is the lid will fall off and you won't realize it and then all of a sudden there's ants or bugs inside your food or inside your eating utensils. So I like lids that close, even my big lids close, they latch close. Um, yeah, this is an old tub, I don't have a lot of stuff in it. Here's a little bonus tip for you. These skewers here for roasted marshmallows, don't buy the ones that fold up like this. Uh, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to be able to spin it. Let's see if the, uh, here I'll put a clothespin on it. Oh, I can spin the clothespin. All right, let me, okay, this is a little Canon book. All right, this is very lightweight. It's just a little paper, little paper pad here. So now if I go to spin it, oh, it doesn't spin because the uh, weight and all these little grooves here, it just spins inside of those. Even if I were to spin it right here, it still doesn't move. The only way for it to move is if I grab the full tang portion here and then I can spin it all I want. And this is lighter than a hot dog. If you put a hot dog on here, you're not going to be able to spin it unless you're super close. So if you're going to get a marshmallow roaster or a hot dog roaster, if you're going to buy one, get a full tang one that does not fold up. That's my little rant there. And get yourself some tubs that the lids cla that clasp shut. They're very important. They also help keep your stuff waterproof. So if it's raining, if it starts to rain or something, you don't have to worry about everything inside getting soaked. You have time to figure out what you're doing. You have time to pack up everything on the picnic table and then put the tubs inside the vehicle and you don't have to worry about everything getting soaked either. Uh, next is gloves. You're gonna have to get a good pair of gloves. Now, if you're going to be reaching into the fire or take using them as uh, hot pad holders or something, I suggest leather. Uh, you can get a lot of really nice gloves that are polyester, but that polyester, if you grab something that's hot, it's gonna melt to your hand. Uh, trust me, I had mechanics gloves, just standard mechanics gloves, and I grabbed a alcohol stove that I thought was out, and it was not out and it melted right to my hand. And so it's important that you know what the material is, you understand what the material is capable of. These are mechanics gloves, but these are leather mechanics gloves. These aren't the polyester ones. Uh, I just changed the color of them with oils. But yeah, I like full leather gloves. And I use these for everything. I use them for working. I use them for collecting sticks and twigs for fires. Uh, you need to protect your hands. Your hands are very important. Your hands are what's going to be operating your knife and your saw and tying knots. And the more cut up and nasty your hands are, the harder everything becomes. And so buy yourself a good pair of gloves so that you can protect your hands and so that you can accomplish all of these camp chores uh, comfortably and easily. And so make sure that you research gloves because they're not, it's not as straightforward as you would think. Uh, next is rope. So rope or cordage. I like paracord. Uh, this is 550 cord. It's capable of holding 550 pounds. This is Titan paracord. This is black and so it probably blends into my shirt. So the point that this is making here is you can't see this, which means at night you can't see this. It's hard to see if you're going to make a clothesline out of black cordage. It's really hard to see and you don't want people running into it. And so you might want to get a higher visibility cordage. Now this green 
is high visibility against my black shirt. You can see this really well. But if you have green grass and green trees and everything is green behind it, it's going to be hard to see as well. So I like purple. If I'm going to be hanging, I don't know if you can see the purple. But I like using purple if it's going to be in the air, if it's going to be in a place where people can run into it. Purple is very contrasty. There's nothing in nature that's purple. And so if you see purple, you know to avoid it, okay? Because it's going to be cordage or it's going to be something you don't want to run into. Uh, same thing, there's camouflage cordage, which is really cool and a lot of people want the camouflage cordage because that's really nice making paracord bracelets or uh, lanyards or whatever and camouflage is nice but again you don't want to be making a clothesline or having your tent if you're going to tie your tent down people are going to be tripping over it because they don't see it so make sure that you're buying the cordage that you want again there's paracord there's jute twine there's bank line there's hemp rope there's climbing rope there's a lot of different ropes and cordage out there so make sure you do your research and buy the one that's going to perform the tasks you want to perform uh, gorilla tape or duct tape again black white uh, there's different one inch two inch and so again you're gonna have to do your research everybody prefers different some people prefer duct tape some people prefer gorilla tape uh, my dad prefers t-rex tape then the trick to this is this takes up a lot of room okay if you have a big roll of duct tape it takes up a lot of room so what you do is you go and you find yourself some used up gift cards and then you wrap the tape around the gift cards and so it's a much smaller package it fits you can put this in your pocket and have lots of duct tape on you or gorilla tape i use gorilla tape this is two inch and you can use that tape to make repairs now you can use it to tape things together if you need to there's a lot of things you can do with tape and so make sure that you're carrying it and figure out exactly what it is that works best for you in your uh, situation next is a shamag or a bandana a bandana my minnesota showing uh, the shamags are my favorite because they're so humongous I can probably cut this into fourths and have four bandanas and so I like it because of the extra material I can cut a big chunk of this off and still use it for whatever I need to use it for uh, I carry one sometimes I carry two just because you can use it for so much you can put it over a cup and then pour water from the river into it and it's going to take all the sticks and twigs and algae and all the big contaminants out you can use it to you can get it wet and help cool you down you can keep it dry wrap it around your neck and stay warm you can put it over your face if it's really windy and the sand is whipping around you can put it over your face uh, to prevent you from breathing in that sand or keeping it out of your eyes or bugs you can use to prevent bugs uh, there's a ton of things you can do with a bandana or a shamag and again just do your research and then pick the one that works best some people don't like carrying the shamags because they're big and bulky and they take up a lot of room where a bandana is much smaller you can put it almost anywhere so again do your research figure out what's going to work best for you next is games or books once you get good at camping once you get good at knowing how much firewood you're going to need once you get good at kind of performing the tasks needed you're going to have a lot of time to just sit and relax and enjoy yourself and when you first get out there and you're relaxing and enjoying yourself and doing nothing it can be very rewarding but by the second or third day depending on how long you're out you can get bored really quick of just sitting there doing nothing and if you don't have Wi-Fi or a signal on your phone, you can't play games, you can't look on Facebook, you can't do any of the things that you usually do, which I find the most beneficial part of camping. But you are, you're going to be looking for something to do. And so if you're by yourself, if you are with people that enjoy to read, you can bring a book. 
And so whether you bring an outdoor book like Camping and Woodcraft or Bushcraft 101 or Edible Wild Plants, I recommend getting this book, but don't use it to eat plants. Use it to learn how to identify plants and then make sure that you are 100% positive it is an edible plant. There's a lot of poisonous plants that look like edible plants and so just identifying different plants is fun, but don't eat them until you know for sure. Uh, this is a kid's book. This is Survive and Thrive uh, Wilderness Safety Skills. This is a good book for kids if you have kids in your family. Uh, or you can just bring books like House of Scorpion, uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, the Bible. Uh, you're gonna be out there for a day or two and so it's a good time to catch up on your reading and so whatever your interests are uh, you can just sit down enjoy a really good book get caught up on your reading and that's one way of handling it but if you're with multiple people it's hard for everyone to just sit and read together you're gonna be bored sometimes there's gonna be people doing other things and to sit down as a group and play a game really helps pass the time and it really gets everybody talking, communicating. And so the common things are a deck of cards. Uh, get a deck of cards. They make, these are the case, this is a waterproof case for survival cards. But I took those out and I put conflicted cards in here. And so I can play them as a traditional set of cards or I can read them and we can discuss different survival situations. Here I have Pocket Farkle, which is essentially just dice. You can play Farkle with everybody or you can use the dice to play other games. You can use the dice and the cards together to play games. They also make Uno. Uno's a fun camp game. It's small, compact. Uh, it doesn't take up a lot of room. Here I have Monopoly Deal. So if you like Monopoly and traditional board games, there are a few that have a card game variant. Uh, if you've been subscribed, you know that I really enjoy board games. I like camping. My second favorite hobby is board games. And there is a lot of different tiny epic board games that are very small. You can get the ultra tiny epic games as well. Uh, if you like Catan, there's the dice game or the card game if you want to do that. Uh, Deckscape is a, it's like an escape room type game. And so you can do these activities with multiple people and that way you're all sitting together, you're all entertained together and you're not just off doing your own separate thing, reading separately and then you come together and have nothing to talk about because I wasn't reading what you were reading and you weren't reading what I was reading. And so these allow people to come together a lot better. So games or books. I like games. Next, we're going to talk about power banks. Now, power banks, I use large power banks because I have to charge my camera or my microphone. And there's a lot of extra charging devices that I have to carry to, you, to do YouTube videos. You guys will probably be fine with these much smaller options. Uh, but who knows? It depends on how many days you're going to be out. It depends on how much you actually use your devices. It depends on how big your power banks are going to be. Just make sure that you get one that can last your whole trip. You don't want to be in an emergency situation and your phone's dead. That phone is kind of your lifeline. It's your 911 call. It's your GPS if you get lost. It's there's a lot of things that your phone can perform for you. And so make sure that you can keep it charged. Uh, then the bonus. Okay, so there's the first 10. Every single one of these videos I had a bonus. So in this video I decided to have a bonus as well. And this video's bonus is an axe. And the reason this is a bonus item is because I don't use an axe all that often. Uh, my camping style doesn't cater to an axe. I have used an axe. I have used this axe. I enjoy This is my favorite axe that I own. Uh, but I don't use it all that much because the style of camping that I do, I just carry a large knife and a saw. And so 
For me, this was a bonus item on this list, but for you, this might be an essential item. This might be something that you take with you every single trip. And so again, do your research and figure out what the capabilities of the ax are. Make sure that you understand how to use it safely and properly. Make sure that you understand if you're going to choose a knife or a saw, how to use them properly and safely. And with that being said, that will be the final 10 items in this series of Getting Started Camping. I'm sure I missed a lot of things. And so if there's something that I missed, leave it in the comment section down below. I've gotten a lot of feedback saying that these videos have been very helpful and hopefully we can continue to help people getting started in the comment section as well. So after they watch this video and get some ideas, they can go in the comment section and get even more ideas and we can make people's first experience the best experience so that they continue to enjoy the hobby. And so make sure to leave them comments in the comment section and I cannot wait to see you on my next video.